Hey everybody, and welcome to day seven. Jeez, day seven. Oh man, it's been a week. Good God! Wow, uh, it doesn't even feel like that. Uh, one week uh, when I started uh, this whole thirty-one days of indie horror. Uh, please welcome my guest today. I'm Jonathan Medium. Please welcome my guest today, David Lane. How are you doing, David? Uh, I am fine. Hello to all the Jonathan Moody uh, fan base there. What's up, J Moo? We're ready to roll. <laughs> Yeah, we are. Um, so this is going to be a lot of fun because um, we talked about the movie or we we got to watch the movie and now we're reviewing Slasher.com. Which is on Tubi, which means it's free. So there's no excuse to not watch it. Exactly. I mean, you have to put up with the, uh, was it the commercials um, throughout? Ah, there's but... like four commercial breaks through the course of a movie. Oh, for real? There's only four? Sometimes yeah, there's more. Yeah, it was real easy. Yeah, sometimes there's more. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, I guess it depends on the length of the movie or something. Um, but it was, you know, I, I watched it on Amazon, actually. I cheated. So without commercial breaks. But still, you can watch it on Amazon. You can watch it on Tubi. Or I think you could buy it like almost any place or whatever um it's readily available uh this support was... your indie filmmakers y'all yeah so 2017 i believe is when it came out and uh itn distributed it and what's cool about that is i just did uh a review of lake fear 3 which was itn uh yesterday so i guess it's itn this week um you know starting out uh Ooh. But, uh, yeah, so this movie was made in 2017, and uh, I, I guess, you know, there have been a lot of these, like, uh, horrors of online dating, you know, horror films, you know what yep. I mean? Like, that came out. Well, um, I think the uh, horror is always going to take what is currently the fear of society, and use that to scare the crap out of you. Uh, and so obviously in the last several years, we've seen a ton of technology-based uh, horror films, a lot of internet stuff. Uh, and uh, this is keeping that trend going, of course. Exactly. When I, okay, so when I first heard the title slasher.com, I was mm -hmm. actually thinking it was a website that you went to and like somebody yep. went after you. Like that was my initial thought because I didn't read like, I, I, sometimes I don't like to read the back of the box or, or whatever to get the feel for the movie because I want to go in like completely blind, you know, which is what I did with this movie. Yeah, I, I did no research on this uh, at all uh, because that's how I roll. Uh, <laughs> but I will say the name is a bit of a misdirect, I think, or I don't want to say a poor choice of names, but no one in this movie, logs onto the internet. Right. Now, they discuss, hey, we met on the internet, and it's, you know, it's a, it's a couple that's going out on a first date, and they have met on a, on a website, but all of that happens before the movie starts. So I think it's a little bit of a, an unfortunate name because there is no logging onto any internet website uh, in this film, um, and as far as the slasher part goes, there's a little bit of discussion in the beginning about, oh yeah, yeah, there, there's a slasher out there. But that's also not the point of the film. Um, <laughs> uh, the, the film, to, I don't know how much spoilers we're going to do here. We're going to do spoilers. Uh, if, if anybody okay, hasn't okay. seen this by now, I mean, they should watch it first, then come back and listen to this review anyway. That's what I think. Sure. Cool. So uh, I think that there's a little bit of a, 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 like I said, an unfortunate uh, title there because when it comes to, let's say, hopefully they made a lot of money on it and there's going to be a sequel. Okay. Well, the sequel would certainly have nothing to do with slasher.com. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it, it would, ha because the point of the movie goes off into a much different, uh, I mean, nothing like Texas Chainsaw, but, uh, you know, a family per se of uh of killers um so yeah it's uh a little unfortunate but um you know i appreciate the attempt well i, I think they could if they made a slasher.com sequel um they could do it once again where 
uh, but see, the problem with that would be that we're already kind of more well, like we already know that as the audience uh, that, you know, that he's the slasher guy, you know, that he's, mm -hmm. so if he were to, to get another date with somebody else to set it up or something and then bring it back home to mama and papa, you know, or whatever, cause that, that would be where I would go in the sequel. Obviously you'd want the, the family back again sure. to, mm -hmm. to attack and everything. But, um, you know, I mean, it would just, it would feel like what I did like about it was that, um, there were two set, sets of the killers. You know what I mean? There was the, the favorite sure. killer and then there was just the single slasher guy. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that um, I, I didn't necessarily buy into it, but I think there was a little bit of a thought of, and, and, and again, here's, here's where I think it's unfortunate. As they were setting up the movie, and one thing I'll give it props for is they took their time setting up the, the threat. Uh, mm -hmm. Most movies, a lot of indie films, I, I'm, I don't, you know, I, I'm just a guy that watches movies. I, I, I don't have any training like you or, or others in Hollywood. Uh, and look, look at you. Oh yeah, just me. Tra uh, no, trained. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah. No, no, I gotcha. Uh, but it seems like a lot of indie horror films, right at that 30 minute mark, is where the horror starts. It's uh -huh. almost like they, it's almost like they teach you when you hit 30 minutes, something better happen. Actually, uh, they do, uh, and that's not just in horror films, but that's like, sure. um, the, generally speaking, in a horror film, you're supposed to have, like, by the end of the first act, which is about 25 to 30 pages in, uh, you have to have something that happens that's, like, kind of the point of no return for the lead character. Sure. So, uh, in this, this case, they didn't do that it, necessarily. It, it took longer. Uh, you kind of live in that world a little bit, and I always appreciate that. I tend to like a, you know, I, I like my slashers, but I tend to also uh, be more into, I guess, well, I hate to use the term highbrow horror films, but uh, and I won't use post-horror. Uh, but um, I appreciate it that they gave you that extra time to get to know the couple and kind of get a feel for it. I will say, in that whatever it was, 40, 45 minutes or whatever it was before it, before the action kicks into gear. Um, it, it was the idea of a slasher wasn't really in my, on my head, it, right. in my head. It, it was much more of a, this family is getting weirder and weirder and weirder. And this family is going to do something to them. Uh -huh. um, you know? And so I think that again, not to belabor the point, but I think that um, you almost forgot about the slasher aspect until late in the film <laughs> uh, because it, it felt much more like uh, a hillbilly family um, going after people in, in a cabin in the woods. Um, so I mean, it which, felt like, like you said, you, uh, you mentioned Texas Ch uh, Chainsaw Massacre and, and obviously there's RA who's been in, um, you know, was, mm -hmm. was Leatherface and Leatherface three or yep. Chainsaw Massacre three Leatherface. Um, and he, he is, you know, to be honest, he's really great in this movie. I, like, I, I had a fun time um, just watching him uh, with a lot of stuff. Like, because honestly, I, I, I don't get to see him play like, n you know, he's not normal, but kind of like a more where he actually has more lines and he's not just running yeah. through the woods trying to kill people or something. So yeah, well, I mean, Leatherface is not the most talkative guy in the world. Um, you know, so, uh, yeah, he definitely had more lines and they got to explore a rather, uh, strange marriage. Uh, <laughs> this is, um, that's a, that's a weird family. Um, here's the thing, Freddy Krueger, he's got his glove. Everybody knows it. Jason has the hockey mask. Iconic, right? Mm -hmm. Ma Mama. She's got a spoon. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. I, I, I see what you're getting with that. That's uh, and that spoon is is in this film a lot more than I imagined it would be. Um, and um, oh. yeah, uh, and she uses it for some uh, some interesting things. Um, but uh, yeah, so. It's definitely a strange marriage, uh, and they certainly play it up. Look, 
for the people who follow me and listen to my web, my podcast, I obviously go much more uh, into the psychological and cultural uh, leanings behind behind meanings behind a film. This is not high art. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but but what it is is you you have these actors who are veterans. Uh, I think the uh, mama was played by from Return of the Living Dead. Joel Shepard. Yep, Joel Shepard. And, um, you know, so you've got uh, two, you know, icons of, of horror that are able to just let it go, you know, <laughs> and, and just be really goofy, really cheesy. That was the intent of the film. Uh, you know, I, I don't think that anyone was, was sitting there going, yeah, we're going to be uh, winning Oscars for this. They were trying to be over the top to show you how nuts this couple is. Yeah. Um, and and nuts they are. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I found the spoon very interesting, though. Yeah, I, 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 I too, like the spoon. I was like, wait, where is she going with this? Like, is she going to, like, stab somebody with a spoon or? Well, well, the answer is she went lots of places with that spoon. That's true. <laughs> she, uh, she went, lots uh, of different places, but... It was, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, all in all, and and I really enjoyed the the two leads, um, because uh, like, I was the problem with a lot of these movies is like sort of predict, you know, what's gonna happen, you know, because mm -hmm. there's only so many ways you can you can go in these sort of formulaic um type movies, um, mm -hmm. and so I did not see well, at first I. Saw I was wondering because they were out in the middle of nowhere um, and it was, you know, and the cabin in the woods kind of thing or whatever. And there right. was this weird redneck family, uh, which I like. There was a line in it where they said like uh, the rednecks, uh, the rednecks, let the rednecks do what the rednecks do or something like that. Like it was, it was, I forgot. Yes. Yes. Something like that. And I thought it was really funny. Like uh, that these people, this family was just kind of a fucked up family who was their daughter, I guess, adopted. I want to say like, okay. I'm, I'm not going to say adopted. Um, my thought process is that um, you're talking about uh, the, uh, the young lady who wanted to go off into the city and they wouldn't let her and they still treated her like a little girl and stuff like that. Um. Just to th look, just for the the sake of verisimilitude, uh, they treated her like a like a little little girl. She still played with dolls, and they still treated her like she was a child. Uh, the actress did have a couple of tattoos, um, so. Right. But I can I can justify that in my head because I don't think that that was not their daughter. That was a girl they took. They've kidnapped and, a little girl. Yeah. Yeah, that was a girl that they they may have killed everyone else that was part of her party, and they kept her and basically through a series of, uh, you know, Stockholm syndrome uh, treatment, um, they got her to believe that she was part of their family, mm -hmm. uh, and basically brought her not her intellect, but her mindset down closer to back to, I guess, I guess that's even theoretically, I don't know if they looked into this, but theoretically that's possible where if you're being abused in a situation like that, um, you could theoretically revert to a more childlike version of yourself. I could, I could see that. I'm not a psychologist. I don't have a degree. I don't even, I'm not even a doctor of thugonomics. Okay. <laughs> I, I, but, uh, but I can see where that would, where that would be a thing. So um, I took it as she was the, a survivor who was kept as part of the family as a plaything for, uh, for daddy. Yeah. Um, which, which is pretty sick. Um, pretty disturbing. But, yeah. but, uh, but, you know, I like it at the end that the, the Jewel Shepard's character, mama says, you know, she'll just get him another one you know? Yeah. Well, a exactly. Or yeah, whatever, two thirds of the way through, whatever. Um, where, and they even say there have been others before her. Right. Uh, so you remember know, so, that. Yeah. Remember that other one that we could. Yeah. Or, Annie or Anna or whatever the other, or whatever one's name was. And so um, I think it's, uh, they have been obviously killing people that have been visiting their, uh, 
their rental uh, cabins, um, they've been killing people for a long time, and occasionally they'll find one that'll hit daddy daddy's fancy, and they'll keep her, and until you know something happens and they uh, they die uh, or get killed, and they then replace her. Um, yeah. You know, so that's. Um, this is a messed up family. <laughs> this is I, this is this is this is not a, this is not a good family. One once again though, I feel like I, I swear to God this should have had another title because like what yes. I um what I what I saw from this movie also was like so many missed opportunities to go a different route with the period that um so what I was thinking in my head was what it should have been. And I feel bad for saying this to, you know, obviously screenwriters, you know, put this together their way that they, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. I, I, I would have seen like, what I would have wanted to do is like the, the two people have met, they've been going out for a while because really I, I feel like these two characters got way too close, way too quickly. You know, like it, it felt really awkward um, because they were all of a sudden skinny dipping together. They were making out. They were having sex the first night that they met. Like it just did not feel real like to me. Uh, sounds like a great date to me. I got to be honest. Um, well, I'm, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I know. I know. But um, see, that's, that's, I think that's the problem, you know, like it seems like a great fantasy, but. Well, well, I, I, I'll say this in its defense because I, um, I felt the same way that you're talking throughout the entire movie until that second twist gets revealed. And then I went, well, of course she was ready to take him off to the woods on their first date, no, having never met, you, right. you know, I mean, right now. And again, with him, he was willing to do that because he was planning on killing her too, <laughs> you know, but, but I will say, even though they justify that at the end, in that they both both of the people who planned a first date out in the middle of the woods together, immediately went skinny dipping together, immediately hooked up and uh, all that, they they justified it at the end with they both had ulterior motives for why they did that, but it didn't take away the fact that the I spent the entire film leading up to that going, come on. Right. You know, so, so I definitely see where you're coming from. Right. And you know, I, I get, I get the twist, right? Like I, I understand why, why those things like worked and everything. And I think I felt like maybe there might've been a need for a line in it where the girl says something to the effect of, I knew you were the slasher, you know, that's why I have invited you out here, you know, because I feel like she sort of set him up, you know, because she wasn't the slasher. She knew that, you know. She right, even said yeah. there's a line in the movie where she, in the beginning of the movie. Early on, yeah. Early on where she says, do you think I'm the, what, do you think I'm the slasher? You know, and right. he kind of so gets she's aware that the slasher's out there. Right. So there's that line there. So it could have been set up where she says that line, you know, like right before like the end end where uh, they all work together, I guess. They kind of come as a team at the end. Sure. Uh, the, the, uh, the Avengers assemble. <laughs> the Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I mean, maybe discount Avengers, okay? Well, I mean, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know Great what value Avengers. The vil villains uh, the assemble. Um, but see, so, you know, it, it really worked um, for that ending, but I just, I think, like, there should have been something there. Um, but then you're right. Like, throughout the whole thing, you're, like, going... Uh, come on like who would who would do this like this just doesn't seem this seems like a fantasy like somebody would love you know would love to go on a first date in the mountains was like i mean you're not supposed right. to even really like go to a swimming pool on your first date technically right it, it's it's 2020 if anyone out there is watching this and you're in the singles uh swimming pool uh Please don't go out to the middle of the woods where there's no cell phone service on a on a first date with someone you've never freaking met. Uh, I mean, like I, I do see where until that twist comes, 
you're going, what is this girl thinking? What is, what is going on? And of course we do later find out what she's thinking, but it, it didn't help the fact that I spent the entire film questioning her intelligence or, or questioning her judgment. Um, and also, so like, just like and his judgment, like too, you said, like, make, I mean, there was some things with him too. I was like going, wait a minute. Like, no, no guy. Like, why would you do that? You know? And it wasn't his fault. Like, once again, you're right. It sets up at the end where they both are like, you know, they are trying to, I mean, I don't know if I'm always wonder Cause like now that they team up at the end, like, was it like they, they didn't, they were like, ah, you know what? He can be a family member now. He can be one of us now, you know? Like, I, I don't, I don't totally get, like, uh, uh, honestly, I, I think I might have even preferred it. And you're the screenwriter, not me. I think I might have preferred it if there was no mention of a slasher at all. And right. then you find out, and then you find out at the end that he was planning to kill her. Okay, so that's where I would have uh, what would have done it differently myself. And I'll, I'll give you guys an idea of what I would have done, but uh, it, it doesn't matter because it's already like this movie's out and made, yeah, the movie's but, made. But uh, in my alternate world, if I had the chance to rewrite this, I would have said it where the uh, where it, they've been dating for a while you know, right? And everything seems fine. Like he seems normal, but there's been these series of murders that have been happening in the town, but he seems like the nice guy, you know, like they met on an online dating app. Everything seems good, you know, nothing, nothing too awkward, you know, right? So they decide, let's go to the, you know, let's go out to the country and, you know, have a, have a weekend to get a getaway, right? Then they run into this crazy people and then you find out that he's also a serial killer. That's where I would have gone. Um, yeah. So it's maybe in a different again, movie in a way, but like, right. But, I but again, calling the movie slasher.com and starting the film with talk about a slasher and then never mentioning that slasher again until the last, you know, whatever, 10 minutes of the movie or whatever, mm -hmm. 15 minutes of the movie. It, it it kind of um, well eventually the slasher is going to show up right I mean uh, of, it, it of course has to be one of those two <laughs> I mean, well, you yeah know. and I mean uh, so so it, it it kind of ruined a little bit of the surprise for me and I know we're we're talking way too much about the name of the film <laughs> but uh, I, right. I mean I think the names of a film is important in fact I just want to I want to say one more thing about names. The family is the Myers family. Come on. There's only one Myers in, hor in horror. Uh, yeah. And I understand maybe it was an homage, but when, you, when you're making a film, especially one that's open-ended like this one, where literally they're basically driving off to find their next victims. Right. You're thinking, you, I think you should always be thinking, could there be a sequel? Exactly. Are we going to have another one? And so when you're thinking about setting up the sequel, your plan is to have the Myers family as your slasher killers. Uh, there's, I, there's already a well-known Myers slasher killer. Give them literally any other name. Maybe not I mean, Voorhees. Well, yeah. So look, yeah, exactly. So you take like Jason Voorhees, you take Freddy Krueger, you take Michael Myers, you take um, even Chucky, uh, who's Ch uh, Charles Lee Ray. You take yep. these different people's names and you see that each person has a different last name or even first name, right? Yep. So Jesse Myers, you're right. That just sounds very much like you know, like my, the Michael Myers family or something or whatever. Is that, is that what they're trying to get with? I mean, probably not. If, if, you're, is... if you're making a slasher character, uh, I always, and again, I'm not an expert, but I think that one of the first things you should do is design your character so that you have a great looking character that can stand. I mean, Sam is a modern icon and you go to any of the halloween stores and sam merchandise is flying why because look at the character they took the time to make a great character that you can put next to chucky jason michael myers pinhead and 
He belongs there. When you saddle yourself with, yeah, our characters have the same last name as Michael Myers. Well, where are you going to go from there? You, you're never going to be an iconic franchise. You can't be because did, there uh, already is a Myers. We did uh, Hatchet. Hatchet has an amazing uh, uh, killer, uh, Victor Crowley. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, and see, that is, I mean, that's just an interesting, you know, uh, what Adam Green wanted to do and set out to do was create an iconic killer, right? I mean, I think that's probably half the problem, too, with this is, like, the mixture of both, like, trying to be a serial killer and trying to be a family killer stuff together. Yeah, like a, a backwoods, inbred family killer. I mean, not that they're inbred, but it's um they might as well be uh, yeah i know no, but um they it, it's that type of film where it's the crazy family that that kills people who come uh near their land or whatever uh we you know we've seen that that type of movie um i mean certainly there are your yeah, house of thousand corpses or you know texas chainsaws or whatever but uh in general you don't really see serial killer and crazy uh, country bumpkin out in the middle of nowhere families. You know, that's right. usually not in the same film. And I commend them for doing that. But I don't know that it worked entirely, especially when it comes to potential sequels. Yeah. And maybe, I mean, maybe they were never planning on there being a sequel. I mean, they left it open or there could be a sequel, but I don't think they ever like, because it, like it's been three years since this came out. Yeah. Oh, you know? oh sure. But I mean, I'm just saying when you're making your film, right. um, you, you, you know, I think when you, when you, when you make a horror film, you got to be thinking, what if it catches on? You know, what if this is the next terrifier, you know, right. and out of nowhere, art, the clown is a huge deal, you know? So mm -hmm. I think that, um, I think you should reach, you know, shoot for the stars. You know, maybe you'll get to the moon. That no, that's that's absolutely right. Uh, so yeah, so all in all, I mean, uh, obviously this movie had a little bit of flaws in it or whatever, but uh, you know, I really, I, I still, I kind of enjoyed it. Like, I'm not. Is it something I would watch? Like, you know, a bunch, probably at least once a year, maybe if like. I had somebody to watch it, somebody else to watch it. Like, I wouldn't watch this alone by myself again, you know. But I'd probably watch it with somebody who hasn't seen it yet or something, you know. Like, it's not – it's it's. I don't regret enough. watching it. Yeah, it's fun enough. Um, I would, couple, I would, couple, couple of other things, uh, if you don't mind. I, I, yeah. This is probably going longer than you intended for – wait, why is this? Uh, the, the lead actor, uh, you said he, you've spoken with him. He's a buddy of yours, whatever. Okay, listen – um throughout the film i kept thinking is he one of the property brothers <laughs> and and when you look at him you're gonna go he doesn't look anything like a property brother for some reason he reminded me of the property brothers that's funny and i need to see an hgtv horror film where the property brothers are killed uh <laughs> or are the killers you know? yes oh yeah of course you know what they do look a little sinister. You know, uh, you, so, you you put them in a in a movie where they uh, they're selling homes and then they're murdering the people in the homes or something, you know, or whatever. <laughs> so uh, yeah, um, and one other thing is, so much of this movie is based on um, uh, almost sexual assault. I get, I, I mean, it's implied. Um, you know, the one girl has been. Um, kidnapped and indoctrinated into part of the family and it's pretty clear that daddy thinks of her as his toy um and uh you know there's other allusions to that and they and there's multiple mentions of oh we're going to do some things to you <sighs> what is your opinion on the fact that there's a lot of talk about it but they never explicitly like i kind of expected oh, they're going to go real dark and real grimy here. And it, it doesn't. A lot of anything like that is kind of off screen. Did you, uh, did you think that it was going to go places that it, did, that it didn't go? Or um, I don't know. I don't think so. I, never really, I was never really thinking about that when I was watching it. Um, I mean, 
I was interested to see where it went, you know, and stuff. And there were times where like, like daddy's touching his daughter and inappropriately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's definitely, stuff. it's definitely creepy. I, like I said, I was a little afraid that it was going to like get into some trigger territory, you know, like an I'm I spit on your grave didn't. or something I, like that. I'm glad it didn't. Like, I don't, I feel oh, yeah. like that, that would probably kill the, the mood of what this was. I mean, this movie wasn't a, that wasn't like the sole purpose of this movie. The sole purpose of this movie was basically the end, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. He was the he was the killer uh, after all, and that he was because I mean, like once again, it was predictable in the sense that I had a feeling like that guy was the killer, right? Or she was the killer. There's either one of those two, and then both. It turned out both of them were sort of yeah, but yeah, but yeah. Turns turns out when when you're starting a relationship, you might as well just accept you're both crazy. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> you both you both have some uh, some baggage. Um, so, uh, and I will say, and this is, um, for the people who watch these types of films for the boobs, they're there. They're there. Um, <laughs> There's some, but I almost um, felt like it didn't even need that. Like, um, I mean, I, I, it, like there's that scene, the skinny dipping scene. And I'm like, I've seen this scene, you know, usually somebody well, gets murdered, after skinny dipping but um you are burying the lead though in the the most um <laughs> the most unneeded topless scene was during the fight where uh oh, yeah. the the daughter and and the the hero sla slash slasher are fighting and just mysteriously her top <laughs> her top and but i mean i get that when it comes to indie slasher backwoods killer type things there's going to be a portion of the of the audience that are going to be looking for that it's there um the kills are not the most yeah, well first of all they're not that plentiful mm -hmm. um yeah there's, there's not that many of them yeah, I mean, if you if you think about it, not a whole lot of deaths in the film, uh, which was a little surprising. Um, well, it was also that and the kills aren't necessarily, um, you know, it's it's not Jason throwing someone up, uh, in a sleeping bag up against the tree. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, they're, they're kind of standard kills. You, but were you disappointed by them, or did you think I mean, they were fine? Or what I was disappointed by is. Um, you know what I, you know what, now that I'm thinking about it, you got me thinking about it, but um, I would have loved if it was called slasher.com that it wasn't a mystery, you know, that like that we knew that he was the slasher from the very beginning because then he could have gone around the town and like said, oh, sweetie, I'm going to go pick up some groceries. I'll be right back and then go murder some people, come back and, you know, you know what I mean? Things like that would have been, I think that would have been more fun. Um, well, I mean, look at a movie like Creep. And, of course, the sequel Creep 2, not as good as the original, but it's still good. Uh, Creep is one of the more well-regarded kind of sl slasher-type movies. There's not a whole lot of uh, doubt as to who that killer is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and I, just to your, to your point, those are the, the Creep series is a really good uh, franchise. And... You're following the killer, yeah. you know, you're, you're, you're following a bad person and it's perfectly okay. There's no one's, you know, you don't have to follow someone you think is a good person. Uh, the rise of Leslie Vernon, uh, you know, you're not rooting for, Re for Leslie Vernon to kill everyone, but you're following him on his journey. And just like you mentioned, it would not be a deal breaker if you knew he was the killer. Exactly. Um, and you know, I kind of like movies where you know who the killer is, you know, more or less like, you know, obviously Scream really like set a thing where, you know, the mystery of the who the killer is. And then all of a sudden there's all these Scream knockoffs that you don't know who the killer is or there's might be more than one killer. And um, and and that's sort of what this movie I, this movie felt very much like Scream in a way, like um, in the sense that. But how many of these films do it as well as Scream? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, none no, of them. I'm, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> well, and, and uh, I, high tension. Um, well, even then, that was 
that was really good um, because that actually had like the psychological, like you don't know what the, because f- that twist at the end of, of High Tension was amazing. Um, yeah. That just, that made that movie. I mean, because I, I was going through that. I am one of those guys who, I, I've talked about this on many of my podcasts and everything. I hate movies where there's just like one person in a house by themselves. You know what I mean? It gets really boring unless you can do it really, really well. And there's very few people who I feel like can actually do that without boring me, you know? And High Tension is one of those movies where I was on the edge of my seat, like like thinking, what in the heck is going to happen next, you know? And and in, and just to go off on what you're saying, um, another one that did it uh, uh, well fairly recently, Mike Flanagan, who is uh, a a king of horror and will continue to be one of the uh, one of the greats uh, into the future. Uh, his movie Hush, uh-huh. um, which um, the the twist there. Uh, oh, well, don't, is say, that, don't say, don't say, don't say, don't say, because I have not seen it yet. No, no, no. no. It, it, it's not a twist. It's it's actually in the. It's a twist on the it, uh, on the person home alone being stalked. Okay. Uh, the twist there is that uh, she's deaf. Right, right, right. So, uh, which that's not giving anything away. It's in <laughs> no, the no, IMDb. I was just, just making sure. Yeah. Didn't okay. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, yet. Not, I'm not. I'm um, not. And by the way, it turns out in the end of Hush that uh, Rosebud was a sled the entire time. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I just ruined it for you. Oh, uh, no, it. but um, the. Uh, that what was great about that movie is yes it's one person it's in a house and there's someone trying to kill her but there's that added <laughs> there's that added thing uh or even um what is it uh don't breathe uh where the killer is uh blind or uh, uh what, what's that um a quiet place where everybody yes. is quiet and like yep uh, you know, so there are definitely ways to to make this uh, formula more interesting. Uh, and you're saying that maybe they didn't quite hit it to your liking this time, or? Yeah, I mean, it, uh, I don't know. It it had its moments where I I kind of I mean, like I said, I kind of predicted that one of them would be it, and then at least one of them would be it, and then they both were it. So I mean, once again, it goes yeah, a little bit of a surprise a little bit of like scream, you know, like there's two killers kind of thing or whatever, but you kind of already, they say there's four. Five. <laughs> yeah. I, Wait, I like in it. fact, as long as we're spoiling it, even the cop knew. So technically everyone in the movie was a killer. <laughs> well, I, yeah, no, I actually even guessed that because I was like, okay, I'm, I'm guessing that the cops in on this too, because you know, um, I just, for some reason, I thought like this town is so, seems so fucked up and everybody knows who mama and papa are or whatever. So I just, I assumed, um, you know what I mean? Like, I assumed that like the whole town knows that these are some fucked up people, especially when I saw like their bodies were out in the middle of the woods, like just just hanging. They're not even buried. They're just kind of like all the dead bodies are just there. And I'm like, okay, so people don't go in the woods like in the town yeah the <laughs> cops aren't looking for these missing people yes What's up? yeah so like obviously there's there's some more like hints that the police would know about it and everything too and um but i didn't hate this movie uh at, well i didn't hate this movie as much as you think uh, i don't want to <laughs> be too hard on it like that but um uh, you know like for instance um you're not a fan of midsommar oh, i i i Loved it. I cried at the end of Midsommar. Uh, I mean, uh, Happy Tears, I, which basically says a lot about my mental uh, well-being, uh, because I thought it was a happy ending. And I, I left that movie, and everyone else was like, no, that movie wasn't a happy ending. That was a tragic ending. And I was like, oh, oh, really? Uh, I need counseling. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I love that type of movie. Uh, like I said, I hate to use the word uh, highbrow. Um, uh, the black coat's daughter, you know, I, I love, you know, real moody kind of films. Hey, um, don't use my name in a negative context. Uh, no, no. Oh, these are, <laughs> again, these are two of my favorite movies uh, of the last several years. I was just so, joking. Cause it's my uh, last name is Moody. Yes, I know. Uh, I, you know, I, I love, mo- I love movies that are real, uh, Jonathan. Um, <laughs> but the, uh, no, but so this type of movie is, not what I usually watch. It's not what I seek out. Uh, it's 
you know, it's completely different, but you know, it, for the people who are out there who like these kind of backwoods, crazy family killing people, it ticks the boxes. It's pretty fun as far as that goes. Um, you know, it's not reinventing the wheel. It's not cabin in the woods. It's not making you rethink everything you've ever seen about horror. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't regret the 90 minutes I spent watching it, though. Right. And I mean, and it was short enough, like it was like close to 90 minutes. Like it was like an, an, an hour and 29 minutes. And I, I mean, it, it went quickly, uh, you know, enough where I didn't like it. There was, there wasn't really slow parts, even though like there were like getting to know you stuff, you know, or whatever, yeah. like scenes where they're just getting to know each other. And, and like I said, that, that still sort of seemed a little fast for me. Like I just, I yeah. felt like. I mean, oh sure yeah i was like i i like he even seemed so shy you know i mean i know apparently i guess that was a front he was putting up but he seemed so mm -hmm. shy that i was like would he really feel comfortable like his character not knowing how he was at the end like being you know like comfortable with all that i don't know it's just well i mean just uh doing uh and a non-scientific poll of the uh of the guys <laughs> that uh that follow your uh, career and your podcast. Um, if if you're on a date with a girl and she takes her clothes off, what do you do? Um, I mean, I, I guess you you, you, you know, I mean, and so I, I'm willing to give it a uh, for that. I'm willing to give it some space because let's face it, there's a lot of guys that are like, uh, start making plans for that second date. Well, I mean, <laughs> you know? everybody's so, always yeah. says like Tinder's for hookups and stuff, so maybe they met on yeah. Tinder. I mean, like, but, I mean, they, I mean, it got even to the point where they, they were, like, holding hands the first day. Oh, sure, yeah. And, and, then, and, and, and what was interesting was, and I know that they weren't boyfriend and girlfriend, I get it, but they had the whole, uh, we met, they bought, they physically bonded very quickly and we're and we're like making plans for hey you know as soon as we can let's make plans to come back up here and mm -hmm. relive this magical experience and then when the the trouble hit he was like hey my friend is in danger and it's like oh wait a minute uh you and your friend <laughs> you and your friend have done quite a lot together uh in right. the Two days that you've known, and I understand that they were just friends, but like some, like even that moment, I was like, because like I, I'm, I'm not that type of tender type person, you know, um, you know, and I think I'm kind of getting that same vibe from you, where it's just right. like, you know, there's more to life than just going out there. Hey guys, seriously, there is more to life than just going out there on Tinder and meeting, you know, however well, many I mean, people look, you can hey, meet. Hey, I'm not slagging that. Like, no, I'm like look, no, if no, that's no. what you want to do, and that's no, do what, what you want. Both, both want to do. I'm all for it. Um, you know. Uh, that's yeah. That's that's true. I, I don't mean to. I don't mean to shame anyone with that. Um, it's just it's not the way I live my life. But mm -hmm. um, uh, if 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 you wanna if you wanna do that, go right ahead. Um. It's just, it was, like I said, it was very quick. I, I just, I, it's like, your friend still? Uh, but anyway, um, I, I think that it was, it was, it was not a waste of 90 minutes, put it that way. Um, I think that there was some interesting ideas in the film. Uh, don't know that the execution was always there to, uh, to really, really uh, make things uh, pop. But, but, you know, uh, at least they tried with some ideas, right? Uh -huh. No, I mean, I'll I'll give them this that they made a hour and night uh, hour and a half movie that actually was, you know, enjoyable enough where I watched the whole thing and I didn't, um, you know, like it didn't bore me, you know. And to me, that's honestly like one of the the biggest problems I have with a lot of indie films these days is like it's just sort of boring, you know, because like they don't have a lot of money and they don't have a lot of you know, a lot of stuff that they can do. And this, at least, uh, the characters were interesting enough. And I had a fun time with, like, the chase scenes and, and you know, um, the battles between them all that I just, you know, was sort of fun. I mean... Uh, yeah, I mean, and, I, you know, some some of the characterization, I'm not sure, is was completely consistent. 
Um, you know, I, I, I did like the idea, and boy, we're talking about this film a lot more than the film, uh, I think the screenwriter uh, thought about it, but I did like how the slasher, once he kind of had his little one-on-one -on -one with mom, he was like, you know what, maybe I can learn something from this girl, from this lady, right. uh, you know, and he did kind of have that little aha moment of, huh, maybe, maybe I'm, Maybe I'm not the slasher I thought I was. This crazy uh, killer lady with the spoon, maybe she's got some uh, some info to uh, to give me. And so, I, I mean, some of that stuff I, th I thought was pretty, pretty interesting. But um, yeah, again, it's not high art. It's not changing. It's not changing cinema as we know it. Right. Exactly. Although, although. Right, right now there is no cinema as we know it. <laughs> so uh, actually, movie yeah. theaters have just come back. You know, movie theaters. Uh, you need to uh, refresh your uh, news feed because uh, Regal Regal Cinema is has announced they are closing again. What? Uh, uh, all, they just uh, charged me the freaking eighteen dollars. So they uh, better. Jonathan Moody is now uh, uh, eighteen dollars poorer. Uh, <laughs> but I'm gonna yes, call them up. I better they better refund me because if they really are closing, because uh, on my Regal app it still says movies that are up. So I, uh, well, I, I don't know when they're closing, but Regal is uh, because uh, James Bond got pushed back. Uh, you guys didn't think we would talk about James Bond on <laughs> uh, the Slasher.com review, but that's how we roll. So uh, James Bond got pushed back. And Batman got pushed back. Uh, everything got pushed. So uh, Regal's going to reclose. Um, well, they better refund is, my freaking money. That's all I'm they, If they're going to reclose, they better refund. I know. Uh, or else you have uh, a horror mind coming after you, Regal Cinemas. <laughs> I just, I mean, I'm kind of disappointed because I was like, oh, okay, well, I, I was almost going to ask them for a refund to begin with. But then I was like, you know, maybe... I will. Uh, I'll actually go to a movie. You know, I'll try it out. Listen, see what it's like. And then, it. What movie were you going to see? Um, I hadn't decided yet, so I guess it's a good thing that oh, it's good. closing again. Because there's I not really just, much. Like they said, Hocus Pocus is coming back. You know. Uh, the, yeah, actually, uh, Hocus Pocus was number two at the box office last weekend. Well, here's the problem: is like all the the regals that are around my area are like 15 min, uh, 15 miles away. You know, so that's like an hour drive, you know, basically to, you know, right. traffic and there's stuff. I'm like, I'm not, I don't really want to go there, you know, but if they're closing, they'll, they'll, they better refund my money. I'm just, that's all I'm going to say. Uh, yep. I actually, I was in a Regal theater uh, a couple of days ago. It is the 40th anniversary of Friday the 13th. Uh, and so the original, wow, uh, the original Friday the 13th got uh, re-released uh, in, uh, some theaters and um i went and saw that on the big screen for the first time nice uh, and uh uh speaking of slasher films that's uh, that is a classic so and that um, has a classic twist you never knew as uh mrs Voorhees. you know the yeah whole um yeah and not to mention one of the all-time great jump scares exactly so anyway uh i think that'll be about a wrap on slasher.com because we are kind of going a lot of a lot of these uh, Zoom ones I'm doing, they go off on little, you know, other stuff that's not just the movie, which I think is great. Um, I think it's uh, cool to have like discussions that you know go other places. But uh, all in all, you know, uh, we we have we have bled this slasher.com film dry. I can tell you I that know. much right now. We, we spent a lot it, more though. time thinking about this film than they did. <laughs> Probably, but you know what? I still think they did a great job for what. I guess no, go ahead, no. I mean, look, not everybody's got Christopher Nolan money. You know what I'm saying? I mean, right. with with the resources they had, they put together. You know, they tried a they tried a couple of twists, uh, and you know, I mean, it was it, it it wasn't high art, but it was fine. It was you yeah. know, you know, I don't I don't think we're dealing with the new Jason Voorhees here, but you know, I th I think that uh you know they made themselves a a film that they should be proud of. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you, David. This is uh, this is awesome. Now, plug your podcast. Uh, 
All right, I'm going to plug a couple of things. Uh, one, I have uh, a podcast uh, called This Podcast Will Save the World. And <laughs> what we do is we talk about horror and sci-fi films and then spin it in a cultural or psychological uh way so for instance uh in the episode where i talked about othering uh we discussed um a, a movie dealing with that subject and then i brought in experts to talk about actual real world othering uh wow. and so same thing we, we uh, i did that with cults uh we've done an episode on mental uh mental illness we uh did schizophrenia uh, uh just recently and so we'll talk about a movie and hype it up, and then I'll bring in an expert to kind of talk about the real world stuff. Uh, but since starting the podcast, um, I've actually taken a step beyond that. Um, I am uh, I'm now the president of a nonprofit uh, called Geek Wellness Education, and that kind of stems from my own history of depression and I have what's called generalized anxiety disorder uh, and it's a very severe form of it but thankfully that's under control now and I noticed that horror movies are kind of a safe haven for people who have these kind of issues whether you're the, the loner in high school or what have you uh, a lot of people go to horror movies because maybe they had a bad childhood with bad family whatever and I want to help those people uh, because I certainly didn't get help for a long time. So uh, GWE, Geek Wellness Education, um, it's, uh, what we're going to be doing is next year when conventions start back up, we're going to be going to horror conventions, uh, and I'm doing something called Horror Heals, a tribute to Child's Play's John LaFia. Uh, John LaFia was the co-creator of Chucky, and he directed Child's Play 2, and uh, he took his own life earlier this year. Uh, I am... Yep. Uh, and he was amazing, of course. Uh, Child's Play 2 was amazing. Um, and so what we're going to be doing is I'm working uh, with members of his family. I'm working with, uh, in fact, I have a signed, I don't know if you can see it here, a signed oh. Tiffany doll from J uh, Jennifer Tilly. Um, nice. And uh, lots of other cool stuff. And so what we're going to be doing is going to uh, horror conventions and sci-fi conventions and uh, showing people with the help of a, psych of a psychologist how they can use these concepts that they've uh, learned in the films that they love to help themselves recover from their own real-world trauma. And, of course, we'll have local, uh, wherever we go to each city, We'll have uh, local mental health resources that they can turn to uh, if someone is in need. Uh, please don't suffer in silence. Uh, if you see us at a con and you need help, come over to us and uh, chat, and we will help direct you to a local resource. And that also means that if anyone watching this is involved with a convention, get up with uh, geekwellnesseducation at gmail.com and uh, bring us to your convention so that we can uh, reach the people in your area. Definitely. There's, try, your, uh, there's, your, there's your cheap plug. Hit, hit up uh, Scares That Care for sure. Uh, they love I love that. Scares That Care. Um, so uh, John Lafia, I just realized, was also the director of one of my favorite horror films uh, that uh, I just, I absolutely love this movie to death. I mean, Child's Play 2 was great, uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Ma but Man's Best Friend, oh, I love that movie. Yes, um, and, and in fact, not only did he also direct that, he directed uh, a couple of episodes of Freddy's Nightmares. Nice. And um, as part of that, um, the raffle that I'm talking about, because, you know, because, hey, we need to raise money, we're a nonprofit, we need to raise money. Part of that the wonderful Robert England nice. uh, contrib contributed some signed 8 by 10s And uh, so that's going to be a uh, part of our raffle as well uh, because they obviously work together on uh, Freddy's Nightmares. Nice. So uh, I'm really, really excited about, uh, about conventions actually happening again. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, my God. We all are. Uh, I, I have this <laughs> feeling like 2021 – Things are going to, I mean, things are going to shift back to sort of normal, you know, like I have the, whatever normal was or whatever, but like, you know, like I, I feel like things are going to like 
shift back. You know what I mean? And um, I guess we'll see. I mean, we, time will only tell, right? Well, yeah. And one thing I will say about this is I do, uh, not to go back on, on my own uh, past, but I think that horror fans and especially those of us who have had, you know, psychological issues, whether it's depression or what have you in the past, we tend to be dealing with this fairly well at times. Mm-hmm. And obviously not everyone, it, you know, obviously this is a trigger. The COVID experience is a triggering event for many people, but uh, I think that those of us who um, who live every day uh, on the edge, mm-hmm. when the rest of the world started living on the edge, we went, uh, yeah, 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 uh huh. This is us. <laughs> the, 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 this is how, this is how it fit for us. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, so uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I agree. I'm. I. It's kind of funny. I, I like. I haven't been diagnosed with anything specifically or anything like that. I've got little issues here and there, but, um, you know, thankfully nothing like depression, you know, or whatever, um, or any of those kind of, um, and thank, thank God, because I don't think if I had depression, I could, I, I would do very well in, uh, in 2020s, um, you know, uh, pandemic, um, issues. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, but, I, I, yeah, I hear you. And, and I mean, and that's that I will say I am completely open about my issues. I think that we have to be, um, you know, I, I dealt with the, I mean, my childhood was garbage. Um, and that causes that caused trauma for me that I never got looked at. Huh. And so all these years later, it just keeps adding up, keeps adding up. And so I, like I said, I have uh, a severe form of what's called generalized anxiety disorder. Um, it's basically a constant state of worry that you're screwing everything up, uh, which, uh, I know what you're thinking, dude, you certainly screwed up this, uh, broadcast. Nope. Uh, <laughs> That's not what but, I was thinking. But, um, but no. So, um, I think that, uh, it's really important that we talk about this. I also have a uh, dependency disorder. Um, those of us, a lot of people in horror, uh, dealt with these kinds of issues. And like I said, that's why I started uh, geek wellness education because we, we, we have, we can't just suffer in silence. Uh, if you're out there and if COVID is triggering you or in, if you're feeling away, reach out. Uh, cause I, I promise you a year ago, uh, about a, about, a, about 13 months ago, I was ready to kill myself. Uh, I, w- I mean, I literally was ready to put a gun, up t- gun to my head and shoot myself. And now, 13 months later, I've filed the paperwork. I've started a nonprofit. And my goal in life is to reach other horror fans and help them uh, get mental health that they need, like, like I have gotten uh, and am continuing to get. So you never know where your life is going to go and the positive directions that it can go. So um, don't give up. All right. Well, I'm going to make sure after this, uh, after this is done and wrapped, I'm going to message uh, Regal and tell them to refund my freaking money. Yes. Um, because uh, that is bullshit. Um, but uh, aside from that, thank you once again, uh, David. Um, and also for all the people that's checking this out, uh, tune in tomorrow. Um, uh, we'll have some more, you know, the day eight. Uh, God, this is you know, it's gonna keep going until the thirty-one what, what, days. What's your movie tomorrow? Uh, it's called The Encounter. You know, it's uh, it's on Tubi as well. What, what, I'm sorry. Uh, what was it again? It's called The Encounter. Oh, The Encounter. Well, I'm gonna have to encounter that movie too. Yeah, so, check uh, it out. I mean, see, that's what I want to do with, with this is uh, have it so people watch can watch things on like Tubi or Shutter or Amazon or whatever it is so that um, they can watch it and then watch our review. Cause I would rather them do that, you know, than, than listen to our spoiler ish review, you know, if they haven't seen it. Yeah. Um, and, and again, these are, these are indie horror films. These are, I mean, when, when you support J Moo, you know, all about this. Mm-hmm. When you, go, when you're buying something or even if you're, you know, streaming it legally <laughs> yep. that that might be the difference between a filmmaker making their next project and not making their next project uh so 
what you know you you we all know you've seen the conjuring a hundred times watch an indie film right uh so yeah and uh, and and if you don't know what indie film to watch jay moo's gonna tell you all about it because uh, he's got 31 days of them i know it's it's crazy we've got uh, i mean so far i mean everything's been sort of some not so great you know or whatever and and a lot of that has to do with just like you know like you said earlier a lot of it has to do with um you know money you know and everything so um yeah but whatever um it's, it is what it is i guess cool. um but all right well, well thank you guys thank you so much uh tune in for the other ones as well as we still got the podcast going on so uh We've got Indie Film Cafe's episode coming up on Monday. Then the next Wednesday, we got Hollywood Boulevard podcast. Then we got Indie Film uh, or Indie Corner Radio. I think is coming back, and a few other podcasts. The mainstream ends this uh, this month, and um, so a few few and uh, Horror Blood and Coffee. I think will be this month as well. And I mean, we just got a bunch of podcasts, you know, for you guys, uh, all on the Indie Film Cafe uh pod pod bean uh account so go check it out go to indie film cafe subscribe uh check out uh you're on this youtube subscribe hit subscribe there uh hit the bell so you can be notified when the next uh day uh was it the the next um uh was a 31 day you know or whatever is coming so and then I think next, uh, well, I know next year we've got some fun stuff coming, but I think even next month I'm going to try to bring some more stuff back and, you know, have a lot of fun. I won't be doing 31 more days because, I mean, this is this already is like I, I'm overwhelming myself. Um, you know what? Look, just be honest with these people. Starting next month, he's going to do 31 days of Thanksgiving films. <laughs> um, It'll be 28 days, I guess. Or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. 27 uh, Whatever. Days. Um, uh, but no, no, because I, oh Lord, I couldn't even imagine. Can you imagine? No, because I, then I would have to do, then I would have to do the trifecta and I would have to do 25 days of Christmas films. Uh, but I can't do it. No, it's just too much. I, I just, I'm so tired already, you know, and, uh, and it's only <laughs> literally I am because like, I mean, I have these, you know, I have the ones I'm doing daily right now but i'm also doing other ones too so like i had to watch i have to watch two movies uh yesterday i have to watch this movie and you know what i mean like it's just so I mean, it's getting the point of all of this is for the makers of slasher.com if you're planning a blu-ray re-release please put the quote on there i'm utterly exhausted <laughs> jonathan moody <laughs> I, I don't and, think that would help you out. <laughs> uh, I don't even know if they'll stay to the end of this. Uh, like nope. this. <laughs> no, pro probably not, but who cares? Um, <laughs> some, someone out there is watching and I'm having a good time. So maybe uh, it's you. you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. It'll be me. Um, so I will wrap up as well uh, as I always do on my own show uh, and let you know that like any great franchise, your story is not over yet. Uh, and Jay Moo, thank you very much for having me. Yeah, thank you so much. This is awesome. This is a lot of fun, and I'm I'm excited uh, to do more episodes of these. And I like to do the Zoom ones. I like to do where I'm talking to people. I don't like to do the solo ones that much. I hear you. Um, because I'm just I, that's not me. I'm I'm more of a guy who likes to talk with other people, uh, kind of guy. Uh, there are some great vloggers out there that can do that, and um, God bless them. But uh, I only do it when I like necessarily have to do it so uh you know i i prefer days like this where i can chat with a friend and talk about this and go over an hour so <laughs> <laughs> over a movie that deserved five minutes i know uh, I, I feel kidding. like they can listen to the comment like this could be like commentary over the the movie itself um <laughs> but all right well thank you uh please david stay stay on while i uh while we say goodbye and I will uh, talk to you right after. So, um, wonderful. Okay. Bye, well, everybody. thank you, everybody. Thank you, and have a great day. Bye.